you too my name is trey welcome to working on change today is going to be more sensitive topic and uh let's just get right into it okay insight she's 47 anorexic and wants help taking her life canada will soon allow it okay an expansion of criteria for medically assisted death when it comes into force in March 2024 will allow Canadians like Polly, whose sole underlying condition is mental illness, to choose medically assisted death. And this comes from Shoe on Head, who happened to find this. Shout out to Shoe. If I got, I think her name is Julia or Julie. I, I can't remember her real name. Uh, good morning. Reminder that Canada is killing the mental ill, also the poor and disabled. Anyone who support this is going straight to some harsh words. Well, let's read into some of this stuff that she uh, put out. One third of Canadians fine with prescribing assisted life taking for the people who are homeless. Uh, Paralympia claims that Canada offered to. I forgot how you say that word now. Euthanize her when she asked for a stair lift. I have a letter saying that if you were so desperate, madam, we can offer you medical assistance in dying. Wow. When you have such severe treatment, resistant depression that even your doctor suggests made. Amir Farsoud has applied for medically assisted dying, known as MAID. He lives in constant agony due to a back injury, but has started the process for end of life because his rooming house is up for sale and he can't find anywhere else to live that he can afford. He barely survives on Ontario disability support payments, which are just over $1,200 a month. He doesn't want to die, but being homeless is not an option. I know in my present health condition I would survive it anyway. Farsud meets the criteria for MAID, physical suffering due to disability that cannot be relieved. His doctor, who knows Farsud's real reason for MAID is his fear of being homeless, signed off on the application in August. Farsud needs a second to do the same. There's a 90-day waiting period. He believes he could potentially access MAID in about a month. I don't wish to be dead, um, even with the pain, even with the meds. Um, I still want to be here. Amir Farsud has applied for medically assisted dying. <clears throat> I know some people are on different sides of the coin on this one. And this is one of these things that goes back to your body, your choice. I mean, doesn't it? Let me tell you this, guys. Let me tell you this. I told you one of the worst things that can happen to a person is falling into despair. You know, one of my mottos I try to keep in my head is never despair, right? Because when you lose hope and people, I know some people take, you know, the word hope and they kind of make a joke of it or they, they think it's kind of goofy to talk that way, but it's a serious thing. When somebody loses hope, they fall into despair. And what happens when a person normally falls into despair? They fall into drugs. They fall into alcohol. They fall into sex. They fall into pornography. They find they fall into everything because they don't believe that any happiness can truly be generated in any other way. When I was using drugs myself when I was younger and I was drinking crazy, it's because I believed such a thing. There was points I would drink and I didn't even care if I lived. I would try to drink as much as humanly possible until my body just threw it up. And I did this because I fell into despair. No matter how much I tried, I just felt like, and I've dealt with this my entire life. I dealt with self-hate. I hated myself growing up. I hated myself when I became an adult. I hated every job. I didn't hate every job I had, but I hated myself at every job. I always felt like I was at the bottom. And I would drink, try to drink my pain away. I tried to smoke my pain away. There was a point in my life where I wanted to take cocaine, heroin, everything. I just didn't want to feel. I don't want to continue on with the life. And you know what's sad about that is that if I was living in this place that has made, or I was living in a place that in 2024, they would allow me to have taken my life, I'd be gone. Because it only takes one second for you to make that decision, right? You get on that bed, you sit down, and they start draining that into your veins, and if you, it's too late then. Listen, in life, you're going to fall. In life, you're going to have some hard times. 
but you can never let yourself give into despair. No matter what you think the worst outcome is going to be. Like this man say, you think he's going to be homeless with the back injury. He would never survive it. Keep going. Keep trying. Keep trying to find a way. I've been homeless. I've ended up on the streets not knowing where else I was going to go. But I never, but I never gave up. I wanted to, though. I wanted to. Trust me on that. But just every day, I just gave, I just gave a little bit more. I found some friends that gave me a little bit more. I found people who cared to just give me a little bit more. Not too long ago, guys, I was evicted out of my apartment. Evicted out of my apartment. And I've told these people to just give me a chance. It didn't matter. I had made mistakes, and that was true. But you know how embarrassing that was? Me and my wife getting kicked out on the streets. Luckily for me, man, I had a, had a plan that just barely squeaked through. I had a plan that barely squeaked through. If that plan had fell through, me and my wife would have been trying to find somewhere to live in a place where there is no salvation armies, there is no homeless shelters. We'd have literally been living in our car with no with nothing. We'd have to throw away all our stuff. I was that close. You know how sad I was. You know how depressed I was. If I would have just went to one of these places and said, you know what? I'm about to be homeless and I can't do it. My wife took my life. Gone. You got to ask yourself, why do they do this? Why do they want you to take your life when you fall into a deep depression? What do they want to take your life when you're having a mental illness and you're dealing with anorexia? Why do they want you to take your life? Because people truly don't think you can ever get out of this despair. People want you to lose hope. I'm sorry to tell you that. As much as you may think this is paved with good intentions, it's not. It's sinister to take somebody who is sad, depressed, dealing with the mental illness and saying, well, we can help you take your life. Does that not sound evil to you? Instead of being like, we're going to try our best to keep trying to help you. And, you know, I understand that it's not always going to work out. This guy could still end up homeless and dying on the streets. But at least he gave it his very all to the very end. And we gave him that opportunity to go through the pain, through the crying. It's always going to suck. People go through tragedy every single day. Every single day. You see that horse right here to the left of me? Or whatever direction you have for you. That horse right behind me. You know what that horse is? That's my son's horse. My son passed away. My son pretty much passed away in my arms. And I have to deal with that every single day. Every single day. And that's hard. But I'm not the only one in this world who has lost a son or a child. There are people who have lost many kids. There are people who have lost their parents. There are people who have lost brothers and sisters in tr more tragic ways than I lost my son. Things that would haunt you for the rest of your days. But you don't give in. You just keep trying. You keep showing up and you go get help. You find some friends. You find somebody you can cry. There's going to be somebody in your life you can cry every single day. And they're going to tell you to keep getting back up. You keep going back. You may have to take some time off work. You may have to take some time away from life. But there are going to be people who can help you through that time to where you can walk back into your job and cry. And then get back on the phone and cry. And then get back on the phone and cry. Or whatever kind of job you have, you could take two, three minutes to go cry. Take two or three minutes to yell, scream, and then come back to work. And then if you got to do it again an hour later, do it again. Life comes with pain. Life sucks sometimes. But there is true joy. And you just have to keep finding that small joy in your life every single day. But we can't take that opportunity for people to one day finally crack through the surface because even at the very darkest of life there can be some light and if we take that from people and take that before they have their breakthrough because how many people do you know who are successful today who wanted to take their lives or were living in their car were homeless on the streets how many stories have you heard where people came out of that 
And now look at them, whatever their success is. It doesn't always have to be financial. It could just be waking up every day and helping their community. We can't take that from people. And we don't deserve or we don't we shouldn't have the opportunity or have the right to take that from from people. If somebody has a chance to wake up another day and keep going, we keep trying. But we are not going to help them fall in the darkest part of despair and take the opportunity from them from ever having a breakthrough because we feel like, oh, well, they can't go on. Let's just get rid of them. Let me know what you think. Goodbye.